we're going to start at 6 o'clock, so I won't keep you guys. Um, we are going to touch on two projects this evening. We're going to talk about 12th Street, which we covered last night, but due to weather, we, uh, we opened that up for tonight as well, so folks can come and hear about 12th Street project, which is up in this neck of the woods too. And then as well, 24th. So I'll, I know a lot of you are here for 24th. We'll touch on that most, but just briefly a little bit for 12th Street in case anybody's interested. Uh, so yes, for both of these projects, actually, conveniently enough, we have the same group working on both of them. So we have Michigan Paving as the primary contractor, so obviously paving. Uh, we have Whiteman. We have Melanie standing here tonight. She's with Whiteman. Uh, designing, inspecting, they'll be with us on this project. And then Road Commission, myself, Jim Hookstrom, the project manager of this. Uh, we have Sarah Phillips here tonight. We have Phil Ox here tonight. We have Ryan Minkus, county engineer tonight. And we have two commissioners, Larry Stay, Howard, Michael Borsma, hanging out around here too. So, first of all, we're going to talk about Wall Street real quick. From D Avenue down to Ravine, this is a uh, project for us. It's got federal safety funds in it. It's got some, a lot of road commission funding as well. It is about $1.8 million. And we expect it to start here mid-April and be done by July. It is uh, roadway reconstruction, so we're taking the whole road out all the way down to gravel. We'll be doing some culvert work, some shoulder work, some widening, uh, concrete curb and gutter at the intersections, and some guardrail. This road here is about 37 years old. It's been chip sealed pretty routinely. Uh, it was paved in 86 and we did apply for safety funding because there's been some crashes, people running up the road. As you can see here, there's not a whole lot of shoulder. We're kind of painting gravel every year, so we hope to fix that. This one, very simple detour. It's going to be Ravine Road, D Avenue. It's a little bit long, but it's relatively simple. Local traffic will be maintained. We always maintain local traffic to homeowners, and get you in and out. There might be a delay, but we'll get you in and out. Emergency vehicles, we will always provide for emergency vehicles. So if you got an ambulance, fire truck, police, whatever, we'll make sure they can get through. Work is primarily 8, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And schedule for this project here. Uh, probably none of you guys are on 12th Street, but we did cut trees back in December. So we cut trees already. We'll be rolling out here in April. We'll be crushing the road, pulverizing it and we'll run into some shoulder widening and call for replacement in that May, May, early, late April. Then we'll hit the curb and gutter and the guardrail, and then paving, June. And then after paving, of course, the paint, the restoration, signing, striping. Now, on to the other one, 24th Street, which you guys are all here for. So, 24th Street from D all way up to M89 fairly long project for us. Uh, it is, again, same funding source. We have the safety funds and we have a large chunk of road commission funds. This one's about $2.5 million, so a little bit bigger price tag. We intend to start again mid-April and we expect to be done by July. Weather pending, of course. This one as well is a roadway reconstruction project. So again, we'll be taking the road out all the way down to gravel. Uh, we will be doing some shoulder widening. If you live north of, I think it's C, where the shoulders are pretty narrow, that's where we'll be doing the widening. South of there, it's already got a paved shoulder, so we're not gonna be touching that. So just the north part is gonna get the shoulder, and AB as well. We will be doing culvert replacement. So again, if there's any culverts out here, if they show any age, deterioration, will be replacing them. And then intersection improvements as well. So that curb and gutter at the radiuses, uh, anything like that, drainage, we will be taking care of that as well. <laughs> this project here, <clears throat> 24th Street AB, is generally around 46 years old. It's a little bit older of a roadway. It was paved in 77. Now, I think we may have had a fix that came in and did some work down here in the south end, but for the majority of it, it's kind of an older road. We've done a lot of chip seals over the years. Last one was 2017. And uh, this one also had the same crash pattern. We had people running off the road here. So this picture, 24, it shows you again, we don't have a lot of area for those people that are running off inadvertently. And we're trying to make it a little bit safer for them. 
Now, we got gravel shoulders, yes, but we're going to try to add a little bit of asphalt out there and give them a little bit of extra room in case they go off the road. Okay, so this one's got a little bit more of a detour to it. There's uh, not a good system to get you easy around this one. So, bear with me. It's going to be M89 to 27 to D to 26 to DE to sprinkle. So, that's quite a jog, and I can map it out for you afterward if you want. Uh, I think we got some slideshows that we can hand out afterwards, so if you want to get it in print, you can get that too. Yeah. This will be posted online, so should you have the need, you can view it later. Uh, I, I will come back for questions later, but if you got a real quick one, I could try to get it now, but otherwise I'm, gonna, I'm just going to ask you to hold your questions. Local, local traffic will be maintained, so despite having a detour route, right, it's going to be down to gravel, it's going to be kind of dusty. We're going to detour the big trucks, but anybody that lives out here, works out here, we will get you in and out. We will get emergency vehicles to you at any time if needed. And we will do the work at the same time, the 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., so daylight hours. And for schedule, it's very similar to 12th Street. These are the same type of work, same contractor. We plan to get them both done by July. We did already do tree work, now I think Melanie, we might have one more tree left to go out there that we missed, so there might be one tree left. But aside from that, we do intend to roll in out in April, and we'll start crushing the road. And uh, from there, we'll start building it back. We'll do the shoulder widening in April and May. We'll do the culvert replacements in May and June, curb and gutter in June, paving in June, guardrail in June. And then the last thing, of course, that restoration seating, paint, signs. So, what should you expect as a resident out here on this road? It will be close to through traffic. So, barricades, detour, it will be rough, it will be dusty, right? When we, when we take that down to gravel, it's going to be a little bit dusty for a period of time. There will be delays, so as the paving truck goes by, the paver and all the big semis and everything like that, you might be delayed a few minutes. We're going to let you out, but you might be delayed. Driveway transition. So, when we do this, the road actually rises up. It's because we're going to grind up the road surface, we're going to pave on top of it. It's going to go up about six inches. So we'll have to go back to your driveways. We're going to carry that back and give you a smooth transition so you don't have a bump at the road. We will be doing mailbox relocations. And I believe, Melanie, if the post is bad, we'll probably be replacing the post at the same time. Lawn disturbance. So we will reseed it. If you have grass now or you have not landscaped yard, we'll put it back as grass. If you have uh, more rural frontage and you got weeds and trees and that kind of stuff, we'll put it back with a uh, roadside mix, pretty standard for us. It's got some nice wildflowers in it, and so that that will be our method of choice. If I can ask you just to hold, I'll come back to you. So the Road Commission does use a mix of fixes. I'm sure you've seen us do this. So our preventative maintenance, pretty standard, is a chip seal. Uh, we got crack fill, we got wedging, so within the layer of asphalt. Rehabilitation jobs are a little bit bigger. That's where we're coming through. We're actually going to pave the road. We may mill it, we may just pave it, or we're paving. And then the reconstruction of the biggest group of projects that cost the most, take the most inconvenience and time. That's like this one. We're going all the way down to the ground. So, to walk you through what we're going to do out there so you can visualize it and kind of understand what we're going to see. This is the tree work. So we've done the tree work, minus one. We've done the tree work. We'll come in with the pulverizer here. We'll, we'll take care of that old asphalt. We'll rip it up. We'll pack it back down as a new base for the road. So those millings and whatnot, that'll be put back underneath the new pavement. Shown here. Looks pretty nice. So again, I mentioned it earlier, but when we do this, that, that, uh, that pulverized material tends to fluff up a little bit. And uh, having that down there, it's real great for the road, but it does mean that we're going to raise the road slightly. So driveways and that are going to be impacted. Shoulder widening. I did talk about that a little bit. So we're going to come in here, we're going to trench out the shoulders, put some gravel in them, and we'll pave on top. So you'll see that going on. Culverts, right? So culverts. This is one area we will be impacted. When we do culverts, I 
guess I should flip to the next slide. We will cross the entire road. So at some days, depending on where the culvert is, you may need to go north, you may need to go south. We'll have our Whiteman inspector on site. We can try to make contact with the residents nearby as they're getting impacted, but for on a daily occurrence, you may have to go a different way just because we're gonna be tearing up the road putting in the new culvert. Concrete curb, that's pretty standard for us. We do this at most of our intersections. You'll see this up there. Paving. So we're actually gonna pave three different times. We're gonna come through, we're gonna put down one layer of pavement, like on the slide here, right on the gravel. And then we'll come through again, we'll put on another two inch layer of asphalt. And we'll come in a third time, put on two more inches, so six inches of asphalt. Shoulders, uh, we'll come in after the pavement, put on about a three foot section of gravel on the outside. Signs, we'll update them. Make sure they're all new, shiny, you can see them at night. Paint, I'm gonna make the request here to the group that please do not drive through the wet paint. It is wet, it will stick to your car. I, we get a lot of calls on this, believe it or not, over here. Please don't drive through the wet paint. Restoration, again, back to that. We're gonna be seeding with the lawn, the, the grass seed, or the native seeding mix. And at the end of the day, the road will feature that new consistent paved shoulder out here beyond the white line, gravel shoulder beyond that, concrete at the intersections, and the updated drainage. Yeah. Now, if you thought that was the end of this, unfortunately, no. We'll be back in one or two years to do a chip seal over this brand new road. And a lot of people ask, well, why are you gonna ruin the new road with the chip seal? But it actually saves us life on this road. So we gain, we figure about seven to 10 years, you know, by putting this down, this chip seal down early. We're buying ourselves more time with this road in the long run. So it is proven to be a measure of uh, cost effectiveness for us for maintaining these roads. So you will see us back probably in the next year or two. So throughout this project, if you need to get a hold of us, couple different methods, one of which, RCKC Connect. I think we have cards over there at the corner. Uh, if you want to pick one up on your way out, this platform, RCKC Connect, will clue you in on any road construction, detours, closures, and general public news. And you can narrow this down, I think, to your township. Um, it'll give you the updates. It's got a QR code reader, which is kind of handy. You can always go to the website and sign up. You can sign up for getting these alerts on phone, call, text, email. Just a word of caution, if you go for the text, we do close roads at night. So you might get a few beeps in the night. So I, I might recommend the email personally. We do have other mechanisms if you want to reach us. We got phone number at the office. We got our website. We got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. And of course, the old standby, the office. So, 3801 Kilgore. So with that, I'm gonna open up to questions. I am going to, uh, we'll, we'll start with some general questions here. If we start getting specific to your case, your driveway, your property, uh, we've got some staff around tonight, so we'll answer those. We got big plans. We didn't have big plans last night, so this is great. I don't have to rely on my magnifying glass and such, but. We got plans, so we'll help you out with your case. Uh, but we're going to start with general questions about the project. And I think Ryan, yeah, we'll just real quick, just before you do that. So we do have copies of the presentation available. We'll leave them back there by the sign-in sheet. So if you didn't sign in on your way in, if you could do that, but you can take a copy of the, the presentation on your way out. Um, so yeah, I'll drop these off. And I know Jim, you have. And I think Ryan, we had some questions from last night that might be pertinent. So you might. If you got those, we can ask yeah, those. But yeah. let's let's start with the crowd here yeah, and see if we got any questions that I can answer. Hi, we have a real dangerous road, 24. Okay. If you're going to take it down to the dirt, yep. we need some of those hills leveled out. I know that costs a lot of money. It does. But if you're going to do that much, could you please take down some of those hills? We can't get out of our driveways. We can't get our mail. Um, it's very dangerous there. Very dangerous. I think for the most part, we'll probably be sticking about the same. It'll, it'll still have hills. But 
I think with, with rebuilding the roadway, obviously we're going to fix the crown of the road. We're going to give you a fresh new pavement. I don't know if we'll be able to take out every hill and every, fix every site distance issue. Now, I know at the intersections, um, 12th and 24th, we're trying to fix those. We've gotten easements from folks, so as you're pulling up on the side streets, we're going to try to clear that back so you can see a little bit better. But I don't know if we're going to be able to help with every driveway case. But we can certainly talk to you about your specific one uh, a little bit later. Yes? Um, are you doing anything with the intersection of D and 24? Right we are stopping short of the intersection of D and 24. Okay. I think somebody else had a question earlier. Just to expound on that, we, oh. did, we, did, we did that when we did, the, we did the avenue a few years ago, so that's why we're not going back into that intersection. Okay. But 2015, we did that problem. There is one thing about that intersection. <clears throat> we had separated from the road commission a couple of years ago. When they redid that, the drainage comes down to the avenue hill, flows around the corner on the 24th, and two years ago, we had about an eight inch trench at the end of our driveway. They came out and they talked about, I have no idea what it is, a Kent County drain? Kent County curb, probably. That's where we got the, the asphalt on the sides that kind of flares up a little bit. So it keeps the road water in the road. And I think you do have that down there. I think, Melanie, we are expanding that slightly. It's actually coming up. Because the water's taking it out because there's so much water. Oh, okay. So I, we need that that whole amendment of the driveway approach thing, even though you're not doing, you know, we're the last driveway down there. Yeah. I mean, it, it was we need it done. Well, down the asphalt. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to stick around afterward because I would like to figure out what driveway you are and what that's referenced. Because I know we're doing some work with the drainage right there. I know we're doing some work with that Kent County or Valley gutter system. So. Check with one of us afterward. I definitely want to get that figured out. So, so the question was, how much, how much right away do we have to work with out here, right? From the center of the road, how much property? I, uh, I'm right. I got five acres right down there before you get to M89. Yes. That is all downhill. Okay. On the side. How much you're going to take of that? How are you going to fill it? We are. We're not. If we haven't approached you at this point, we're not taking any extra land. We have approached some owners about this, and we have gotten some easements. Because we got all the uh, all the residents. Yes, on the south side. There. And on the other side of the road, it's farmland. Yes. And there's, you, if you go down through there, you're going to have to move everything. You got gas, electric, and everything. Now I got two electric boxes and gas boxes on my property, and. I've had cars miss them this far right now. And if you're gonna move that road in tighter, you ain't gonna have that. You're gonna have accidents. I've had people in my front yard, they come up there 45, 50 miles an hour and try to stop for M89 and it's slipperier and crap. And they go right out in my front yard because that's all downhill. Okay. And if you're putting that over further yet, you're going to be right uh, right on them boxes. You're going to have to move all that stuff. Yeah. So I so don't. Jim, how, I, how, how wide are we widening the shoulder in that? In, this? in that area, I mean, Melanie, I believe we're at a 14 foot. We got 11 foot lane, three foot paved shoulder. Three, yeah, 11 foot lane, three foot paved, three foot gravel. Yeah. So it'll be about four to six feet max wide. So again, this might be a good situation if and you got a couple of boxes. Each side. A couple boxes to so look at. Have 12 if, foot. If, uh, as I know of it, it that's at 35 feet or 32 feet from the center of the road on a Class C road. That road used to be a gravel road. And you have got heavy, heavy traffic going over with the, with the uh, especially the gravel road. The gravel trucks. Okay. They're going tandem and they're going by the house. They pull a brake. So you're jumping, jumping ahead of us a little bit. I know I was going to ask Jim a question later about whether or not this is going to be a Class A all season road. So we are going to review that. So it should be able to handle all the traffic and everything, the loads and, yeah. and everything. So I, I do want to make sure if there's other questions we can get around to other people. Well, so again, if some, there's, if there's some specific. That, that road is so rough because of the heavy traffic. Yep. The heavy, not the cars, the heavy traffic. Yep. So I drove semi all my life. We can and nobody's paying any attention 
to how about the weight loss on that roll? I, I understand. And it it up. So we can we can get again specifically with you. Want to make sure as a general question session, we can get everybody to ask their questions. So we can follow up with you here after too. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah sir. I have a question on a, on a drainage on CB Avenue or CB Avenue coming yes. down Twenty Fourth Street. You redid that a few years ago and made a big mud hole. That's the worst thing it's ever been. Down on the north. Started putting the curbs on, and you got all the water to right there. And, and people who are coming up, heading north, they uh, they're in for a real surprise because that's some deep water. Has that been redesigned? We will be cutting the shoulders back there. So right now you got a little edge of the uh, the grown up weeds and such, the grass over the, over the yeah. time. Well, it, that, it builds up there, so. We're going to cut that down. We're going to build. We're going to build the road correctly. We're going to crown it correct so the water flows both east and west. And we will be putting in some ditches through here as well. Can you just repeat that? Uh, yeah, thank you. I, I keep forgetting that. So for the audience online, um, the question was asked: What are we going to do about the water and drainage as it comes down to C D Avenue on Twenty uh, Fourth Street? So uh, we'll be doing the ditches. We'll be doing proper grading of that shoulder. We'll, we'll cut the high shoulder off so the water has a chance to get off the roadway. Um, close the ditch and everything else and the roadway right, right there. Right. On the north it's side not going to work that way. And the low point there is on the west side so we will be putting in some uh, culverts going underneath the road to pass the water by to the west side. I also know on CD Avenue you know, rain comes down there and washes out the shoulder quite a bit. Mm -hmm. We're going to be putting some of that, uh, who mentioned the Kent County curb, we'll be putting some of that HMA curb up the hill. So that should assist with uh, washing out the shoulders on CD and bringing all that gravel down into well, They said a couple curb. years ago when they did that CD Avenue, and I get questioned as soon as they were done, right there in front of my house. And they said, oh, you won't have water problem. I've got, it's worse now. And I, I just so the, like come down 24, it's the same thing. Yep. You've got those two big gullies that are right there. There's no reason why you can't put something there to distract the water from coming down into my yard and making a light there. Yep. Is to put those gutters there, or whatever they would call them, but the asphalt and have it instead drain all the way down. So someone we can, needs, we can touch on that. Come when it rains. Like I've said, I've talked yep. to six different people and no one's been out there to see exactly how that water comes down. My, I was there yesterday when it was raining, so we should talk afterwards. Oh, when it was snowing or rain? It, it, it was the rain, it was the freezing rain. There was still there was water filling up in the ditches. We can talk afterwards. But Any, it doesn't go to where you want to put it yet. We can talk Anybody afterwards. else? General, yeah. general project questions? <laughs> Timeline? Uh, anything like that? Yes, the sir. The surface thing. Yes. You mentioned, is it only going to be like C Avenue North? Nope, the whole thing will be resurfaced. All so the way up to the everything will be resurfaced. The only widening will occur on that north section and AB. He's yes, ma'am. I might have missed it, but are we getting paved shoulders or, yes. or gravel? Yes, uh, the question was are you getting paved shoulders or gravel? Both. You'll get <coughs> both. You'll get a three foot paved shoulder, so from the white line, three feet of asphalt. And then beyond that, three more feet of gravel. Correct, Melanie? Yes. Yes. But that's after C D Avenue. Correct. That is that is this that is the section to the north where there's currently no shoulder. Six foot more. Okay. Yeah. I, let me see if I can't go back here real quick because I did have that picture. Yeah. Here's north. Because we have no shoulder at all right now. So this one here, you're coming up to the curb, right? So right here, you can see there is no no paint shoulder. Okay, well, but there is there is a there is a gravel shoulder. Yeah. So there is a gravel shoulder. Here. Even if it's been overgrown with grass, there is gravel on the edge of that road, two to three feet. So when we're talking about the widening, we're coming over essentially another three feet. Okay. Right, right now we don't have a shoulder, so we're correct. Six more feet. Okay. Lay out the, the, the white line. Right. Ma'am, I, I think you had a question. I'm a little concerned about the speed of traffic on that road, okay. especially if you make it really nice. Well, <laughs> and, and what about the 
what the heck is the speed limit anyway? Because there are no signs there. <laughs> That's yeah. a good question. So the question was, what is the speed limit? And there's a concern for speeding after the project. You've been there 56 years, and I have not seen a speed limit. Uh, agreed. And you might not, because uh, with the Michigan State law, if the road is unposted, it's 55. It's like, you know. Yeah. Understand, it yeah. is 55. And no, we are not changing that with this project. Um, 55 is the maximum that we can go. Uh, if, if we needed to review it, the township could weigh in on that, but uh, there's a, it's quite a process. <laughs> let, me, let me start you with that. It's quite a process. We have to involve the state police out of Lansing. They come in and do studies. We have to do studies. It takes a year plus, and I can't guarantee it's going to be lower. Yeah. Like she said, we're too old to run across the street to get our hands. Yeah. And it's not like it's M89 anymore. All, all, all the building and everything that's on, on that road, all the way to M89. Other places that are like that, they've lowered the speed a little because there's more residences. They will lower the speed to whatever traffic is driving. That is how the state police sets the speed limit. So, the so if traffic is driving 55, they're going to put it at 55. I understand. The gravel trucks are the biggest force of us. Yeah. Yep. I think somebody. Yeah, that winding part. Yeah. You're just talking about from C Avenue North. Yeah, I've, 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 between D and C. I think it's at C where there's already some pavement outside the white line. Yeah. I think after C it starts to turn more like that. So, yeah. yes. So from C Avenue yeah. North to M89. So between D Avenue and C Avenue, it's going to be pretty much the way it is. It'll now. stay about the same. It'll get a whole new section of asphalt, which right. would be great, but it will stay about the same width. Yeah, because you'd be right in our front yard. I, I understand that. Very big now. There's also some uh, creeks and such and pot. We're not going to get it. There's like a ditch. There's a ditch, yes. And I thought, I got they're going to build that up then and then open no. it. Thank you. Nope. Don't bother. So <laughs> the, the widening, for the, for the video viewers here, the widening will occur. C Avenue North, not to D Avenue. Any other general questions? Yes. Um, I'm sure you guys know, but is it, can, isn't um, the uh, Spectrum, sorry, the Spectrum is building up right now. They have a permit with you guys, right? Spectrum. Spectrum Charter? Yeah, Telecom. Okay, all right, because I was at a house above C Avenue and they said they're now building up. So that. Yes, there, there have been some utilities question for the viewers is uh, Spectrum, Telecom, are they working out here? Yes, they have been permitted to do work. I believe they're expanding their network. I can't tell you exactly where and to, but I know they have been doing work and we've been coordinating with them so it does not interfere with this project. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? When is this going to start? This will start about April 17th. Now if we get more of that great weather we were having in December and January and whatnot. How long do you think it's going to last? <laughs> the good weather or the year, the construction? Construction we expect to be done by July. Okay, so they, but they are going to replace everything, like your driveway and your the mailboxes and all that stuff. We will, we will go back to the edge of the right-of-way. So I, I got blacked off the driveway and it comes right out. Meets yeah, and we're going to make sure meets again because we don't want to leave you at the end of the day we don't want to walk away from this and have a bump that you have to maneuver over in the future. I, I know that the, the big trucks go by yes. and they're really, they're really doing it quite regularly and mostly most of the people don't get up as early as I do and those guys are driving by my house by 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. And, uh, and they're way overweight. I could, I could feel it. I'm 300 feet off the road, off the road, and I, and it, could, it jiggles my house. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah so what's do. the recourse to that kind of a problem? I know that's not your area, but when this guy comes out, he only comes out at noon, and he leaves by 1:30. Mm -hmm. right. He sits there on the side of the road in a red Ford truck. Yeah. Who is that? Who sits out there in the red Ford yeah. truck? He said the Waymaster. Oh, the Waymaster. Yeah. Uh, so the question was who, who uh, enforces against the overweight trucks and that kind of stuff. I know we have Waymasters that operate mostly during the frost loss season, which is not in effect this year at the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
I think MSP also does some weight enforcement, yeah. if that's they're correct. Here, so. And then they're supposed to be. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, did you hear the other night? Uh, yes, ma'am. Right. Well, there was going to be some discussion about the last approach years is actually is. Excuse, excuse me. What was that? The, the, road, the class of road that this yes. actually is. So the question was, uh, is there going to be discussion about the class of road that this is? At this time, we will review it once the project is done. Uh, with the improvements being made, which is going to be making more, more of this gravel base to the road, and adding the six inches of asphalt on top, it is extremely likely that it will become an all-season road. I can't stand up here tonight and tell you it will be, but we will review it once the road is built. We look at the depth of the gravel, we look at the depth of the asphalt as components to determine if, if it is an all season road. So you're going to have six inches of gravel too then? I think by the time we're done here we should have well above six inches of gravel because I think right now you probably have we're six to eight. Yeah, I got six eight inches now from the road. Yeah. So can we you are... enlighten those of us who yes. don't understand what, what an all season road, what's the intention? Sure. So an all the question is, what is an all-season road? All-season road, uh, it's a road where we have no weight restrictions in the spring. So normally spring thaw, you come out, we got the Waymaster out there, uh, we restrict the weights in the spring. All-season, it would be open all year long for traffic. Well, in other words, it's a Class A road, they bring all semis, everything they want, 24-7. Yep. Because I live close to the road a lot of these guys, my damn beer mouth's shake. I don't want to just talk about the country now, but I'm ready to take a bobcat to peel that shit out myself. What happens if I do that? Am I in trouble with the road commission? Peeling out the asphalt that's out there? Yeah, there's holes like this. And the gravel chain's hit up my whole house. Mouths, everything, my wife's nicknames, bottoms. Can I take the old broken stuff and pull it back out? Oh, yeah, it's bad. I, I would probably, the question is, can you pull it? I call it? you guys, it takes you a month, and walk my hands, come out. They throw five, six shovel pulls, second gravel train pops it out. Mm -hmm. but, but since it's broke, and then pull it out, well, now you're going to fix it. Yeah, but before then, I was going to pull it out, and I just told I could. Yeah, I, I would probably not recommend that you pull out I've pieces of the road. I've taken my tractor and put my plow down in, in my bucket, and I smoothed that out almost all the way up to the highway a lot of times. A lot of times. And so because there's holes there, people come down through there, and you can hear it when they're as I'm outside, the front end of their car goes whack <laughs> when it drops in them holes. It's all that deep. I have a little wide trailer and I can feel it at my house for that. Yeah. Ryan, did you have a question? Yeah, people have questions during the project. Who yeah. Do they contact? Yes, so great, great question. So during the project, if anyone has a question or a concern that they want to talk about, Melanie, you got some kind of business cards. We, we will have an inspector out there for Whiteman. So if you really want to know what's going to happen on a daily basis, how you're going to be impacted, he's probably the best guy to talk to. He's going to know where they're going to be, what culvert they're doing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Nate will be the guy out there, and I believe there's cards over there. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. I have cards, our office number. We will take your service request, and we'll make sure you get a timely response. So if you've got a question or concern, let us know. Either I, Melanie, or Nate, the inspector, will give you a call. There's little half size sheets over there with my contact information and our inspector Nate, his contact information as well. So he was unable to be here. He's taking some time off. But. Thank you. Do so we have another one? Jim, this road is on township line. It is. So the west side is Cooper. The Correct. And that, that's why we're here tonight, Cooper. How much is this project costing each of the respective townships? Uh, None at this time. It's a primary road. So the question was raised, uh, who's paying for this road is, are the townships, because it's a, it's a township line road, so the west side being Cooper, the east side being Richland, who's paying for this? And that would be us, the road commission. Uh, we do have some state funds for safety improvements, mainly. That wide shoulder that I talked about. But the rest of it's road commission funding. The townships are not paying a dime to this. Um, we are not asking them for anything at this time. Maybe aside from a street light here and there, but that's fine. <laughs> are you guys going to put the speed limit signs or afterwards? I'm sorry, what? You said something about signs. Are you going to put yes. the speed limit signs? So the, 20 years. Yeah, so the question was... The 
question was, do we post speed limit signs afterward? I, I did say we do update all the signage. Um, we will not be posting speed limit signs. It is a unposted rural road. It will continue to be so, like many of our other rural roads out here. And it will be unsigned at 55. But they're going 78 miles an hour. Uh, These cars, they fly. No one goes to speed. I, I understand that. Oh my God. That okay, becomes I, an I enforcement. Township, and what we tell people do that, take, write it down, because you're going to find it's probably the same time of the day. Then you can report it to the county sheriff, because they're limited on their staff. Mm -hmm. And they can I come know. out. If it's at 3 to 5 every day, okay. they will do it. So just take a little journal and keep track of it. We've done that to many different roads in the township. Because they can't just say all day long, they can't be out there. But if no, you're no. seeing a pattern, yeah. and then when you call There's them, they will take that information. They'll oh, make sure you. someone's out there. OK, thank you. OK? Yes, ma'am. What is exactly chip steel? I'm on, I'm on CD on yes. the 24th. And a couple years ago, they put something over the road. And it was a literal mess. It was, it was, it didn't stay sealed in and when people drove on it, it flung chips of black top whatever off to the side and into the yards and it didn't affect me because of how my property is, but it was a real, is that what chip seal is that you're going to do to this in a couple of years? So the, qu the question is, what is a chip seal? And there may have been, from what I'm hearing, a bad experience with it on CD. Yes, that is in fact probably a chip seal. Uh, that one probably did not. That one probably did not bond very well. We've had issues from time to time. Um, that that happens. We don't we don't get it right 100 percent. But uh, when we do a good chip seal, it does hold up well. We we are. The goal is not to have it peel off the road. We do have some brochures on chip seal as well. If you'd like to take one. Yes, there are brochures on chip seal. Over there. Yes, sir. This project sounds just like what you did with AB, such a loop cutter is going to be thicker. So if you all followed AB, that came out pretty good. I don't know if you've driven it. I mean, if you live around this area, you should have seen AB. So basically, it's the same process, and they did a pretty good job. Yeah, I think this one will be a little bit wider, if I'm not mistaken. I think, Bill, you worked yeah, with AB. Yeah. This one will be a little bit wider than AB. It'll hold, obviously, more of the truck traffic. And it's a little bit thicker, too. But yes, it's about the same process. And like I mentioned, it's also happening on 12th Street. So both rows will get the same treatment. Anybody else? Otherwise, I'm going to open it up. We'll, like I said, we got plans over here. I got a couple smaller ones up here. Uh, we got several of us here tonight, so we can address your concerns about property, whatever specifics. We can talk about those. Uh, but if anybody has a general question, I'll be happy to take it here before we wrap up. No? Okay. So with that, uh, we'll end this. And uh, like I said, we got plans there. Come find me, Melanie, Ryan, any of us will be happy to talk to you. Thank you all.